Is your stock outperforming? Hi everyone, this is Dimitri Pargamonic with MarketChameleon.com and I'm going to go over a few different examples to look at a stock and if it is outperforming. And when we talk about outperformance, the first thing you want to do is compare your stock to some benchmarks. So in this example, I'm going to use Apple. And to make it simple, of course, you can make any benchmark. You could compare Apple to its peers. You could compare Apple to uh, industry specific index or even to a uh, different stock or you could do it to the market so to keep it simple I'm gonna come down here and I'm just gonna look at the market I'm using SPY uh, as the benchmark and here this is what you typically see so let's go over this first example and we see these are Apple returns for different periods two weeks one month three months and what it's doing is it's going back uh, it three for example in this case three months ago what was the price of Apple uh, then it adds up any dividends that Apple paid from that period and it gives you a total return so you see here for a three month period Apple returned 31.8 percent versus SPY in that same period 10.9 percent so here we see that Apple outperformed the market in other words it did much better than if you just invested in the market and here we see for different periods one year six month three months uh one month or even even in the last two weeks apple has been outperforming the market um now let's let's look a little bit deeper and think more like traders here and i'm going to go to this table um over to the right and now what we want to do is compare apple how strong is it how strong is this stock on a day-to-day -day basis and so what we're going to do so what this is measuring here is looking at daily uh, simple returns and it's going to compare apple returns to spy and here right now it's set to the last 90 days we could look at last 30 days 15 days but let's just keep it for 90 days and we see that in the last 90 days Apple had six sixty one percent of the those days Apple was positive um, versus SPY sixty one percent SPY was positive so here it's they're really equal then we go here and what is the average daily return so we see Apple it's 0.43 percent versus SPY of 0.14 percent so on average the average daily returns in Apple have been higher than SPY and then well the next thing we want to do is compare the average return versus the risk how volatile is Apple versus SPY is is that extra return worth it because if you're getting an extra return but your risk is much higher then that ratio uh, of your your reward versus your risk might be lower and you're better off potentially in SPY so the, then what we do is we look at the daily standard deviations right so this would be our risk so you could see here the st standard deviation of of Apple's daily returns are 1.18 percent versus SPY 0.58 percent so then what we want to do is take the ratio of your average return over your standard deviation to see how much reward for each unit of risk you're taking so you could see here we have highlighted uh, Apple's 36.1 percent versus SPY 23.3 percent so in this case you're much better off if you're just resetting Apple every day on, on a daily basis you 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 reset and had um, the same amount of money at risk every day and I'm gonna go and I'm gonna show you actually in a spreadsheet what that means but Apple just just being long Apple every day on a daily basis versus SPY uh, had a much better risk reward uh, ratio so Apple has been outperforming the the market in this period 90 days and we could go and just even in the last 30 days 15 days we see it's just it continuously has been doing that this last one over here the paired strategy is saying well what if to reduce my risk what if I was long Apple on a daily basis and short SPY in other words I wanted to hedge off my market risk and because I think Apple will outperform SPY 
if the market's going up and it'll outperform if the market's going down but i do want to hedge the market risk because if the market goes down you know i'm a little bit nervous here it'll draw up or down so i'm going to hedge it but i think that 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 would still produce positive returns and here in the last 90 days we could see if you did that strategy then on a daily basis 64 percent of the time that turned out to be positive um the average return was uh 0.29 percent and the standard deviation was 0.87 percent so even when we in this case if we just took that the average return divided by the risk we got a 33.2 percent so even so that paired strategy still underperformed if you just were long apple alone so in this case you're just better off even in the down days in the last 90 days you're still better off in um just just being long apple not even hedging off your your uh market risk so when we talk about this pair strategy let's just go and take a look in the spreadsheet what this means um because that's kind of important especially if you want to do do a pair strategy versus another stock or you do want to hedge off either your market risk or maybe even your industry specific risk for example you know maybe the technology sector so this is what it would look like let's say you started out the first day and apple and i made up these prices so these aren't real prices this is just an example just to show you the ideas but let's say apple the first day was four hundred dollars and spy was two hundred dollars and what you needed to do is in this case i'm not using beta i'm just assuming a one beta and i'm just hedging it dollar for dollar so i want to be long one thousand dollars worth of apple and short one thousand dollars worth of S spy so that means that to to do that in order to do that i have to i'm dividing a thousand dollars right divided by the price of apple stock 400 that means i would have to buy two and a half shares of apple and how much spy would i need to short well i would divide a thousand dollars divided by two hundred dollars which would be the price of spy i would need to short five shares of spy this way um uh dollar neutral right for for apple versus spy and you could see here as traders in spy what we're doing is saying that i'm going to short spy right and when i short spy i'm going to bring in a thousand dollars in other words a thousand dollars because because i borrowed the shares i sold those shares that means a thousand dollars now came into my account you know at some point i have to buy back spy but now i have a thousand dollars in my account and i'm going to use that thousand dollars right because to purchase apple right so then i'm going to use the thousand dollars that came into my account and i'm going to purchase a thousand dollars worth of apple so this way um um i basically use the money from shorting spy to financing the purchase of of apple and you know and if everything goes fine this is what you're kind of doing let's just take a look so you're estimating if you know everything continues on the same path you know there's a cost right there's going to be a, a daily cost uh for borrowing that in which we're estimating right now on average on a on average it's 0.14 percent um and then what you're trying to do is borrow it at that and then earn this right 0.43 percent remember that's just assuming that uh that the next 90 days will be similar of course there's no guarantee but this is the idea you're borrowing you're going to be borrowing money and then you want and then you're going to be investing to make more money back all right now let's go back over here so this is how we would start out so let's say the next day the stocks move right so that's day number one so the next day the stocks move and let's just say day two apple goes from 400 to 500 dollars all right it went up it increased by a hundred dollars and let's say spy went from 200 to 250. okay at the end of the day we want to get back to dollar to to an equal notional right we still want to be uh short a thousand dollars worth of spy long a thousand dollars worth of apples so then we have to rehedge so a new hedge ratio so then what do we do we look over here 
see, we still want to be a thousand dollars, but we have to divide it by uh, the new price, five hundred dollars. So now we need to be long two shares instead of two and a half. And over here, again, we divide a thousand dollars by the new price, two hundred fifty. So we want to be short four shares instead of five. So to adjust it at the end of the day, what we'll have to do is sell a half a share, if you can, right? Uh, half a share of Apple to go from two and a half shares to two. And then you would have to buy back one share of SPY because now you are you don't need to be short five shares at this new level, but only four shares. So you'd be buying one back. And every day you would be adjusting it to keep that $1,000 notional risk of being short 1,000 SPY, being long 1,000 Apple to try to get these daily, daily returns. So that's, and so that's just kind of showing you where you're trying to isolate, right? The alpha of Apple versus the market. You're hedging off, um, your market risk and just, and with the, with the idea that Apple will outperform the market, but you don't want that market risk. So that would be, uh, an example of hedging off, um, your market risk to see if you could achieve, you know, superior daily returns. But of course here, it, we could see here that you would be better off just doing Apple um, alone and not hedging it off. And one other thing that you might want to look at is I'm just going to go over here. I'm going to set up the same thing. Uh, Apple versus SPY. And let's just see in the last year daily returns. So this is more than 90 days. This is in the last year. So we're getting the same statistics. But let, let's let see how how they performed when app when SPY just on down days did that did Apple perform outperform just on down days so you see here I'm gonna put that slider show me only SPY between historically when when the returns were between negative three percent to negative four percent I'm gonna reload that so you could see that there SPY had a hundred percent obviously negative days but Apple did have uh, some days, 18% of those days were still were positive. Um, we could see here that the average return of Apple was on average was higher than SPY. And let's see over here. But on those down days, you could see all three were down. But over here, it did reduce, right? It did reduce the amount that you're down if you just were long Apple um, being hedged. And you can see that would have been the best strategy if you only looked at down days historically. Hopefully this was helpful and see you guys in the next video.